All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about a few survival monsters. Now, what, what I mean by this is knives that I think are honestly pretty darn beastly when it comes to survival. And part of that is due to the CPM 3B steel, which I'm inherently biased to, unfortunately, right, wrong, or indifferent. I have had nothing but really awesome experiences with CPM 3B. And to be fair, there are different levels of heat treatment to not just CPM 3B, but also other steels. And of course, the better or at least the more complementary a heat treat is to a steel whether that be magna cut whether that be cpm 3v whether that be really any steel out there the better the performance is going to be and performance is also slightly subjective because magna cut for instance might be you know heat treated at a higher level for better edge retention and it might be heat treated lower for a better resistance to a uh, better shock resistance or wear resistance potentially, right? So of course heat treats are subjective to their application. So that is another thing to factor, but by and large, invariably, there are truthfully some steels out there that are really high performers in regards to um, just overall, like overall shock resistance and have very high toughness levels and so cpm 3v is definitely that now in addition to this what makes these knives in particular survival monsters well i think primarily what it comes down to is that they just have a lot of the qualities that would make very good survival uh knives in you know different in different settings and they can do a lot of different things overall like they are very um kind of jack of all trades knives. Now, of course, that does mean that they are masters of none, but with that out of the way, let's talk about some survival monsters. All right, so the first one I've already been holding up for a while, one that I actually really love talking about is the Cold Steel SRK in CPM 3V. And I love this knife so much because the Cold Steel SRK, which some people have had the audacity to like go into the comments and like try to tell me that these knives like broke on them within the first five seconds. And I don't know, I mean, I've had multiple SRKs, SRKCs, like the compact version of these, and I've never had any issues with an SRK in my experience. So like I said, out of the multiple that I've had, both new cold steel, both old cold steel, I've never really had any issues with them. And this one, of course, included. So um, for me, I think the cold steel SRK and CPM 3V, while not a cheap knife, is going to be a probably one of the best knives that you can get to get into CPM 3V. Cold Steel really does a good job by keeping the production in Taiwan of bringing a high performance American made steel to a price point that most people can realistically obtain. Now that doesn't mean that you can just go buy one on a whim. Your budget may not allow that, but it does mean that if you save for it and you try to get one, it's more it's going to be more attainable than a three or four hundred dollar you know, knife. So I will say that as far as or in regards to the SRK and 3V. All right, set me up in price point because CPM 3V knives are typically more expensive blades. The next one we're going to look at is the um, Bark River Knives Cub. The Cub is an interesting knife because there are larger Bark Rivers out there, but I think that the Cub, in my opinion, is one of the more well survival adept knives, partly because, of course, you don't have a ramp here, very minimal jimping, so that gives you a very comfortable, you know, spine to rest your thumb on. Of course, you can strike ferro rods off the back of it as well, like uh, you should be able to, and then you also are dealing with a nice, kind of long, drawn out convex grind, and of course, Bark. River is very famous for their convex grinds so of course naturally this one has one now I'm not a huge fan of the fuller on here I think that's more stylistic and I've noticed a lot more of the modern bark rivers tend to have fullers and I'm not entirely sure why that is other than style but it's not bad it doesn't necessarily you know it's not my favorite part of it but as far as the actual performance of this knife goes it is pretty good and most of all of course like most every bark river I've held and I've had at least a half dozen bark rivers like different models and stuff over my time this thing is just incredibly comfortable and uh, yeah I have absolutely no complaints with that nice very nice palm swell on this blade as you can see there and then of course you have a very nice 
um, very flared out um, end to the handle that you can kind of choke back on if you want to do some light chopping with it. And of course, once again, chopping is always subjective with a knife. So it's never going to be as effective as something like a hatchet or an ax, but it's nice to have the ability there. And once again, even if you are using like gloves or um, you know, mittens or something along those lines to hold your knife, having that extra flare at the end is going to help lock your hand in a bit better. Now, the other one that's probably the most unlikely contender for being a survival beast, but still, in my opinion, is pretty darn good, is the ZT Triple Zero Six. And you guys can see here up against the um, Cub, it is just a little bit longer and a bit wider than the Cub. This one is also made out of CPM3V. All of these knives are CPM3V. And uh, this one, when it first dropped, was really supposed to be like a spiritual successor or kind of like a high-end version of the M9 bayonet, like the US military M9 bayonet. And for me, ironically, this thing strikes me more as like a halo knife. Like every time I look at this, I'm like, God, I can so see the UNSC forces carrying this, um, especially because this handle just seems so like, uh, I don't want to say like bare, but it just seems kind of bare. Like there's no texturing to it really. There's no like, you look at a handle like this and you know, you have contouring, a finger guard or kind of, you know, just like natural like palm swells and stuff like that. This knife, it's like, nope, it's just a brick basically. And it's like a tapered brick. Now that being said, a lot of people look at this knife and they're like, God, you know, the handle on this thing must be very uncomfortable. And ironically for basically being a stick, it's actually not that uncomfortable. And uh, it is, once again, to be fair, the handle is rounded. So it's not like this is like a, just like a square, you know, this obviously has some contouring to it and it is rather brickish in a way, but not too bad. And there still is some good traction cut in on the G10 handle slabs. So once again, you're dealing with a full tang knife and uh, the, the cross, the cross guard here is probably my least favorite part about this knife, but overall it's not really that bad and you can easily bypass it to get onto the jimping if you want that or to go a little bit further and bypass the jimping as well. So it's, it's pretty good. One of my favorite parts about this knife and kind of what sets it aside from the other two knives here and I'll pull the SRK so you guys can see here, flat grind versus flat grind. The flat grind on the, um, triple six, triple zero six, uh, the ZT here is much longer and uh, the blade itself is a little bit wider than the SRK. And so because of these reasons, it is a very, very slicey knife. And I am really impressed with how well this thing actually just laser beams through stuff. And because you still have CPM 3V, you're dealing with a good amount of shock resistance, good amount of toughness. And of course this is Cerakote, so the whole like rust resistance isn't really an issue. So it's overall like, in my opinion, once again, when you first look at this, you're like, oh, this is just a bland kind of weird, like survival military knife, right? But then you actually hold it and you're like, it's not that uncomfortable. And the blade actually does a very good job at slicing through things. And it's as far as like an actual cutting edge goes, it's pretty darn impressive. And once again, coupled with the uh, 3V, you can still beat the hell out of this thing and it's going to continue to carry on. But the only thing I dislike about this knife is that at least towards the back here, like right around where the jimping is, they've kind of, um, not so much rounded, but contoured the spine. So you can't really strike a ferro rod off the back, but there are a few other areas, especially like towards the uh, kind of termination towards the tip. You can easily strike ferro rods there. So you can still do it. Not my favorite um, kind of option, but it still is totally tenable. And overall, once again, the performance is still gonna be pretty darn good on this guy. So overall, those are some of the survival beasts that I chose. Once again, CPM 3V is a really awesome steel. I still am definitely biased to it, even though I do have magna cut options that I will be field testing and doing more in depth kind of, you know, actual work with to really see how well, at least for me, in my opinion, how well magna cut fares. I do think magna cuts just fine, especially with something like a GSO like this, it's going to probably perform well, but CPM 3V is pretty awesome because you can really, really take that um, blade edge or blade stock down and still get a very strong, very robust knife that can take a lot of abuse. So in my opinion, I still really love CPM 3V and once again, Survive Knives does make a wide degree of knives. I think most of their um, like standard models come in CPM 3V as well, but yeah. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.